and welcome to the 1000 Authors Show. I'm Vicky Fraser and this is my husband Joe. Hello. Hello. Um, it's pretty early and it's cold. I'm, I'm not, I do not think the recording podcasts at half seven in the morning is going to become the new thing. No, it's not. It's just that we ran out of other time. <laughs> uh, I had a late night last night. Village hall meeting? <sighs> yes. <laughs> yes, the village hall meeting. Yes. Um, right, so we're drinking tea this morning because it is morning. Because it is half past seven in the morning. And we are huddling under a blanket because my office hasn't quite warmed up yet. Mm-hmm. And um, today we are talking, we're on Deadly Sin number three, but we'll come to that in a moment. Okay. Um, because first we're just going to do the normal what we're reading. Joe, what are you reading? <laughs> I'm I'm reading uh, a series of books called The Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan. Mm-hmm. I'm on book like seventeen or something. Um, it, it feels like it's like reaching a crescendo. Something's happening. It might conclude at some point in the next seven or eight books. Are you actually enjoying it? Oh, it's kind of like an endurance sport now. Well, stop it. There's so many books in the world to read, and you're like enduring. An end, never-ending series of books because you feel like you should. That's ridiculous. Well, that's where we are. <laughs> right, okay. Um, and I am reading The Long Walk by Richard Bachman. Actually, I've just finished reading The Long Walk by Richard Bachman, um, who is Stephen King. <laughs> and it was... Oh, it was epic. Yeah? Yeah. It was fantastic. It was... It's the story of a kind of... It's not even the future now, because I think it was set in the 19... 19- 70s or 80s so maybe when he wrote it, it was the future um ish but it's it's kind of an alternate reality i guess um it's not horror well I, it's it's not supernatural horror hmm. um and it's about it's about a long walk that um that young men do and it, this is probably spoiler alert, so if you've never read this you might want to i'm not going to spoil the ending but um if, if you don't know what it is about at all um it's I think they, they choose 100 or 100 young men apply for this long walk and they basically just walk until they die. And the last the last man standing is the winner. Oh, nice. Um, but they're not allowed to slow down below, below four miles an hour. They're not allowed to stop. They're not allowed to wander off course. They're basically followed by soldiers. Okay. It's, it's, and you, I kind of started off reading the book and just being really angry at the entire idea of it and horrified at it. And then nothing really happens in it except so much happens in it. Um, and Ruth let me the book. Hi, Ruth. Hi, Ruth. And I absolutely loved it. And I found it really disturbing and thought-provoking. And um, having walked 26 miles, do you remember when we did that mm-hmm. night walk? I'm just like, no, because they like walk hundreds of miles without stopping. Mm-hmm. And I'm just, I am just was thinking, you guys, that's just not possible. <laughs> anyway, so that is a fantastic book. Okay. It's a really fantastic book. I will read it again in... 53 years cool. um, when I've got over it <laughs> and non-fiction I am reading Do You Talk Funny by David Niall okay uh, which is all about how to talk funny and be funny in writing and it was that was sent to me by Gordon Quigley thank you Gordon hi Gordon um, it was a really nice surprise and yes yeah, so it's great it's, it's by a guy who decided that he wanted to well, he was terrified of public speaking like properly terrified of public speaking okay so he decided to get over that he would learn how to do stand-up comedy <laughs> which is way scarier than public speaking um and he spent a year learning to be a stand-up comedian in the states and then wrote this book um about how to be funny <laughs> and it's, it's really good it's very good i'm really enjoying it so that's that's what we're reading at the moment yes, yes. okay so um Seven Deadly Sins. Yeah, we are on Deadly Sin number three, not number two, as it says in my notes. Um, and this is gluttony. Right. Yeah. So how does how does that work? How do we get that into writing a book? Well, <laughs> you may find that a lot of these deadly sins are actually manifestations of procrastination. And this, right. this this sin, uh, this sin of gluttony, is kind of a form of a form of procrastination, I guess. So I think there are three ways, in my humble but correct opinion, there are three ways in which gluttony can scupper your big book writing adventure. Shall right. we go through them? I think we better had. Yes. Way number one. Too much talk. So glutting yourself on the conversation of 
I'm going to do this. Right. Because we all know someone who talks a big game but never seems to do anything about it, right? Right. Always talking about what they'll do rather than doing it. Exactly. And I think most of us have all probably been that person at some point or another. I know I have. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm not, you know, casting aspersions without including myself in that as well. Um, But, you know, I have written a lot of books, so I can stand here and say that about people who say they're going to write a book and then don't. Um, I have known many, many people who are like going to write a book or climb a mountain or run a marathon or quit their job or learn a language. And then they just never do it. Travel around the world, do this, do that. Yeah. And you just think, well, go on then. (laughs) <laughs> stop talking about it start doing it. and it's I'm not talking about when you say when you announce to you know a select few people I'm going to do this thing because that was like an accountability thing mm-hmm. yeah, and I did that when I wrote my first book I stood up in front of a room full of people and said I'm going to write my book and I'm going to have it in my hands by the next meeting and I did what I didn't do was spend a lot of time telling everybody who would listen <laughs> that I was going to write my book um, because the problem with that is when you're really busy talking about something, you fool your brain into into believing you've actually already done something useful. Because right. um, there's, there's quite a lot of really interesting research about this sort of thing. So this is why visualisation is only good up to a point, right? Because okay. you visualise yourself being successful at something or winning something. And that's great because it makes you believe that you can do it. And it kind of spurs you on to do it. But it might make you believe that you have done it. Yeah, if you do it too much, then your brain starts to be like, oh, I've done it. It's fine. I can just sit back. And they've done um, they've done some research, and I, I literally just remember this, so I have no idea where the research is, and you can go and go look for it if you want to, but they did some research a while ago on shopaholic people mm-hmm. who, you know, had a, had a genuine problem with buying, just buying stuff. And <laughs> don't, don't look at me like that. I don't have a problem with buying stuff. I just occasionally buy ridiculous things. Um, but yeah, people who, like, can't stop buying. Mm-hmm. So, and they'll run up, like, about... They'll run up thousands of pounds on credit cards and loans and things like that and destroy their lives and their families' lives. Um, And so they they did this thing where they had them go window shopping instead. Right. And they found that actually window shopping produces the same chemical changes in your brain, the same feelings in your brain as actually buying something. Only you don't get the buyer's remorse that often happens when you buy stuff that you know you shouldn't. Right. And so that's that's the... A similar theory to, to what can go on with visualization and talking about stuff so yeah by all means you know announce that you're going to write a book to people but then shut up about it and actually do it yeah that's like step one of many steps of doing it mm. you can't just you can't just keep repeating that one you can't and you you know if you're listening you'll probably be thinking to yourself right now oh yeah i know people who do that or oh yeah i've done that before mm. and we all have we've all done it and i think that part of it is to do part of it's to do with fear because it's a big thing to do. I'm going to write a book. It's a big thing to do. And part of it is to do with, well, how much do you really want to write a book? You know, do you want to write it enough to actually stop talking about it and sit down and do it? Hmm. Because if you don't really, really want to do it, then just don't. I mean, talking about it is a lot, is a lot easier, isn't it? Yeah. Talking about it is much easier. And, you know, for a while, people will believe you and they'll be like, oh, that's great. And then after a while, they'll be like, yeah, that person's never going to do it because <laughs> they've been talking about it for six months now and they hmm. haven't sat down and started. So... Um, so that's way number one, is, is too much talking. And that is, it's, it is a form of greed because it's like, oh, I'm just going to talk about this thing that I'm going to do all the time, add, you know, stabbing. And, you know, because after a while people are like, oh my God, I just don't want to hear you talking about that anymore. Yeah. Um, just go and do it or shut up. <laughs> so that is the first form of gluttony. Okay. And that's how it can scuppy your book. Second way that gluttony can scuppy your book um, is too much research. Okay. And this happens to me all the time. And this is a fear thing as well as a procrastination thing. And I remember I remember having minor panic attacks in the library at university when I was writing my dissertation because I knew that the time for researching had passed and the time for writing was nigh. Mm-hmm. And I was still researching frantically and I didn't really need to be at this point, but I, was just, I just did not want to start writing sure. because that's really scary. That's like the next bit. Yeah, the the scary bit. Yeah. So this kind of research greed, it's like you start off with, oh, I need to know a little bit more about this particular topic or there's a bit of a gap in my knowledge here. And that's probably true. Mm -hmm. Totally valid. Yeah. Good use of your time. But then you research it and then you disappear down a wormhole of slightly related research that Mm -hmm. kind of might come in useful, but isn't really related to your core question and your core topic. And before you know it, you've you've, you've spent six months researching and you've written not a single word. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's a bad thing, particularly when you've got a dissertation that's due next week. Yes. 
I got, got first for my dissertation in the end. <laughs> well, you got you know you got a job to do. You got you know you, you're writing this book for a reason, and all the time you are not writing the book, all the time you don't have the book in your hand. You know, you're, you're, it's not doing anything. It's for not me. doing anything. Yeah, it's not it's not gaining you the benefit that you wanted. Yes. So my we um my, bleh, my advice for you if you are an over researcher like me because I am an over researcher, is you just have to trust in yourself that you there will come a time when you know enough. Mm. You're never going to know everything about a topic. You can't. Nobody can. Um, so you're you're just going to have to trust that you know enough to write this part of your book. And my second piece of advice about the over researching thing is do the vast majority of your research early on in the planning and thinking stage of your book. So that's when you should be doing this stuff. You gather your material, you make your notes on the material, you decide what's going to be useful, what's not going to be useful. You save the articles that you want to read so that you can refer to them offline Hmm. when you need them, when you're writing. And then you won't disappear down a wormhole of ridiculous information. Yes, online information is great, but it is distracting and it does pull you off in a different direction every five minutes. Yes, it's like... YouTube is a fantastic thing and I've learned to do many things including my makeup on YouTube but that little sidebar with the oh these things you might be interested in they're terrible because like I'll look at it I'm like yes I am interested in it because YouTube's algorithms are really good yes. <laughs> and they know exactly that um, once I finish learning how to do my makeup I'm probably going to watch want to watch cats being cute yes so uh, <laughs> so that's that's a real problem um, and if you're kind of thinking oh but what if I what if I need you know, what if I am, I've done my research and then I'm writing and then I realise I don't know enough about this. It's like, fine, set aside a maximum of half an hour. Go and do that. Go and do that and then come back again. But don't disappear again into, oh, research phase again. It's like, no, you've got enough information. You might just need a couple of other bits and pieces. And you can even write yourself um, a big sticky note if you're doing it on paper or like a big note if you're doing it on your thing and say, I need to find out more about this and then come back and do it in the editing stage. Just get that first draft down. Yeah. So your first edit could be, okay, I didn't know enough about this, I need to go and and do a little bit more research. But don't allow research to get in the way of getting your shitty first draft down on paper because otherwise you'll you'll, you'll never finish it. Mm. And you'll get very, very stressed as well because over-researching and getting too much information is, is really stressful. This is why I think a lot of modern courses fail. Like people who do, who people like me who run courses, I think they don't have a very good completion rate because they just think that they need to throw loads of information at people and it's just really overwhelming. Hmm. And so if you want somebody to finish something, give them, this is, this is and this leads on to um, the third way in which um, gluttony can scuppy your book. Just give people the one thing and teach them a skill and yeah. don't give them too much extra information. They don't need all of that other stuff to learn this one thing. So like if I want to know how to take great photos um, on my iPhone. I don't need to know how every single filter works. I don't need all of the extra, so you can buy like extra lenses and things, can't you, mm-hmm. for iPhones? You don't, I don't need all of that. I just want to know how to set up an interesting photo. Yeah. And that's something that Sean D'Souza does brilliantly because he's, he's, he takes beautiful photos on Hi, his iPhone. Hi, Sean. And he's just um, started running this, this tiny little how to take great photos course. And that's literally all he teaches you on your iPhone. It's just iPhone. Cool. Um, so related to way number three in which gluttony can scupper you is too much bloat. So right. much like when I eat spaghetti, mm-hmm. uh, too much spaghetti, and then I get really bloated and have the spaghetti regret. Um, if you get overexcited about your book and lose the core message of it, your book will also become bloated. Mm. It stops being lean and, and informative and starts being... A big rambling mess. A big rambling mess, yeah. Yeah, and we've all read books like that. You know, there's, there's, We've all read books where we, we think... Okay, the core message was great, but they could have said that in like half the pages. Yeah. And usually they, they could have done. And there's a couple of reasons why that might happen. One is over-researching. Oh, I've done all this research and now I need to use it all in this book. You need you, to do something. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> some of that research might form another book or some articles or some blog posts. You don't need to use it all in this book. So be really, really strict about what you include. And the second reason I think that bloated books happen is people think that to write a good book, it needs to be a big, thick book. Mm-hmm. And... It doesn't. I mean, if, if if you've got a big complicated message, then maybe it will be a big thick book. But if you can if you can say what you need to say in half the words, then, then do, do that. Do that because it will be people will enjoy it more. They will get more out of it for sure. Um, you will get more positive reviews because uh, quite a lot of negative reviews are like, well, it was okay, but it was too long. What? Well, yeah, just just repeated the same thing. Yeah, and there are a lot of I've read a lot of business books that just keep repeating themselves ad nauseum, hmm. and it's like, yeah, okay, you've hammered that point home fifty three times now. Um, so it's and it's it's 
a skill, it's difficult to stop your book bloating because you want to make sure that people have understood it and you want to give a couple of different examples and you just think, when, when do you stop? And also, if you've got like all of these things that you want to say, but they're not directly related to your main point, then you want to put them in in case you lose them. You've got like endless storage space on your computer. Cut, mm. cut and paste it, stick it in a little file, give it a name and come use it somewhere else. Yeah, use, you, use it for the next book. Yeah, getting rid of it doesn't mean getting rid of it forever. It just means don't use it all in your book. And this is where a really good ed editor will, will be worth their weight in gold. If you really struggle to cut out the bloat from your book, mm. um, a really good editor will be able to help you do that. Or at, very, at the very least, beta readers who can go, this chapter was, you know, was a waste of time. Yeah, you've uh, said this bit before. You've done yeah. that. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's the three ways, the three ways of gluttony okay. in writing your book. Um, you don't have to cram everything in. You can always write other books. Um, just be really super brutal. Um, yeah, what's the what's the takeaway, Joe? Takeaway? Um, no, when to stop. Yeah. Good rule for life, that. <laughs> Know when to stop your research, know when to stop your talking, and know when to stop your writing. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's nicely put. And that is a lot easier said than done. It really is. Yes. I mean, it's it's not easier said than done to stop talking about it. You can just stop talking about it. The research thing takes an act of willpower and courage. And the writing thing is a little bit more skilled. And, you know, if you, if you struggle with that, then get other people to read it. I mean, you should get other people to read it anyway. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, no one to stop. No one to stop. So coming up next week, we're going to be tackling another deadly sin. Okay. Which I've gotten written down as sloth. Okay. And it's going to be accompanied by a picture of a sloth. Because they're cute. Maybe a three-toed one. Maybe a five-toed one. Who knows? Okay. You can choose the sloth. I will choose the sloth. Yes. And we can talk to you a little bit about sloths as well. <laughs> Just because... <laughs> Oh, they're endangered. Okay. And they're lovely. And they move really slowly. Do you remember that one we saw in Costa Rica? Yes. Oh, we can talk about that. That was great. Um, and right, what's going on in my world? Okay, so this is very exciting. I am shortly opening up the waiting list for my live Write Your Book course. And when I say live, I don't mean in person with me. I mean online. But we will be doing it live over the course of 12 weeks with a break in the middle. Nice. Wake off in the middle, and we will be starting right from your blank page. Even if you haven't got an idea yet, we'll be starting right from there. And by the time the twelve weeks is done, if you do all of the things, you will have your at least your shitty first draft of your book. Nice. Yeah, and it's going to be um, there'll be a group. It'll be group work. You'll be in small groups, and I will give you feedback on everything you do, um, pretty much every day of the week. Um, you'll have different things to do each week and each day. It's going to be a very intensive course. Um, but if you can put aside an hour a day to do it, um, you'll have a book. You'll you'll have not an entire book by the end of it. I'm not going to promise that, but you will have the you know hopefully your shitty first draft of your book, um, and that is very very doable. Mm. If you can put aside more than an hour a day, then obviously you'll be you'll be further along. Uh, but yeah, I'm really excited about this. Um, really excited about it. It's going to be really good fun. It's yeah. going to be hard work for everybody, including me, but it's going to be very much worth it, I think. So if you've always wanted to write a book, then, um, yeah, I'll be putting out a waiting list invite. Um, you can join the waiting list. Um, I'm not making that many places available. Um, it's going to be a maximum of 15. Mm -hmm. And I do expect that it will sell out. Um, so, yeah, if you want to get on the waiting list, watch this space. Mm -hmm. And if you've listened to every episode, email me with your postal address and we'll send you a special silly gift. And if you like this podcast, please go and subscribe on iTunes. Do so. Rate us. Yes. Five stars. Five stars. Write us a review. We do like a review. Do like a good review. Joe a good review. A review. Yeah. If you don't like us and you want to leave us a bad review, other podcasts are available. You could do something else with your time. <laughs> yeah. There's actually loads of really good podcasts that we listen to. And at some point we should... At some point, we should do um, an episode of, oh, these are the podcasts that we listen to, and these are why we love them. Hmm. Let's do that after the seven deadly sins. Okay. Yeah. Good plan. Do that. Good plan. All right. We'll be back same time next week. In the meantime, have a fabulous week and weekend, and um, we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>